Okay, in relationship with reference to article 21012, the arc fault circuit interrupter, what happens is uh, they noticed there was a problem in the electrical industry. So what happened is Breaker Juice here, he decided to create the arc fault circuit interrupter because he's going to make money. And he's making money now. He didn't solve the problem, he just made money. So that problem creates, so he decides to get something. Now it goes over to this, uh, his lobbyist, which is a pencil neck melon head, and he's got candy. And he gives it to the new kids writing electrical codes. That's all these guys here. And what happens is that it's gonna break because this arc fault circuit interrupter is on all high current electrical equipment and it's gonna break. And the burden, the financial burden, because he put the arc fault circuit interrupter that's gonna break, the burden, the financial burden is on the property owner. So what happens is the financial property owner, the burden, this property owner will call the first person he knows, uh, which not be an electrician, he wants to, society knows that everybody goes for sale. So Charlie, Charlie here's a handyman, and Charlie is the electrician on sale. So the property owner calls Charlie, and when Charlie gets done to it, it creates another problem. So with the arc fault circuit interrupter, and it tripping off, you got, you got a complete circle here. These guys made money. This guy's made money. These kids writing code haven't got a clue because they're not doing the job. And they don't have the financial burden as a property owner. So that arc fault circuit interrupter goes bad. It doesn't do anything. It just detects an arc. And it will burn out. Charlie will get a hold of it. He'll put in something stupid. Change the plug to a regular 15 amp plug or change the breaker to whatever breaker fits in the panel. And that's going to relate another problem. So you got a vicious circle. Nothing gets accomplished. This is my take on Charlie. And everybody knows this. Is that, right, zoom in. Can you get this? I'm going to leave it there. I stapled it in there. So I, know, I do not want to forget this. So what happens is I listed it as 120 volt is dangerous. Electricity is dangerous. Electrical construction is hard. You put Charlie into that equation and you have a disaster every time. Let's zoom back out. Because Charlie is not an electrician, but he's got the appearance of it because he's got a, because he carries this tool here and a couple other tools. But the property owner just wants to get a sale item and he'll buy Charlie. And he, if they fix it, if it fixes a temporary fix. Okay. Look, uh, Article 210.8, that's a ground fault circuit interrupter protection for dwellings. Number A, dwelling, dwelling units. In paragraph six and seven, it states within six feet of the edge of the sink and only on the counter. That means that these other plugs on the counter do not apply. Something on the other side of the work wall does not apply. Only within six feet of the edge of the sink does a GFI is required according to the 2020 code. It's never changed. They're making, them put, they're making us put it all over the place. That doesn't belong there. It doesn't work anyway. So it's just within six feet of the edge of the sink, and that's the way the code rings. That's the 2020. That's the translation I read, and I, you can't, unless you translate it somewhere else, it doesn't make any sense. This is a kitchen counter only, six feet from the edge of the sink, that's where the GFCI is required. It started like that 35 years ago. And as far as I know, it hasn't been changed at all. Right now, in the 2020 code, this is the way it is. Uh, these people here, everything about these people, they, they, you cannot sell these boxes, this kind of product, out of the home improvement stores. They're way too difficult. You cannot teach a person, a layman, how to install one of these things and expect it to be right. 
When I sent my letter to the National Electrical Code Committee in October 2020, I said that this is so bad. I says, I, as an electrician, I would think that this is most, if not all of them, are installed incorrectly and will not meet National Electrical Code requirements. And since then, I, I boosted it up because they really do, you just can't put this in in a four inch hole without even knowing how it's supported. It, it's supposed to be an invisible installation. You can't do that. You can do that with, the, with maybe a smoke detector, battery smoke detector or something. But you're talking about a 120 volt for, to, to hold the heavy ceiling fan that's motorized, it's spinning around. And it's designed to be put in invisible. You don't even know how it's, so the only way you can do it is gonna be open. Anyways, I put this, uh, I put the, the support box shall only be for sale at electrical wholesale houses and sold it only to licensed electricians. This product is too difficult for an unskilled person to install. All shall have the warning stating, warning this box support must be permitted and inspected by the authority having jurisdiction, which means an electrical inspector and needs to be permitted. The support bar must be supported at each end by number 10 wood screws embedded one inch into the wood joist. And I put this down, National Fire Protection Association, and I introduced uh, the new our new uh, uh, organization, which is the Licensed Knowledgeable Electricians. We'll get into that in a couple of minutes later. But this product cannot be installed. The code does not allow you just to put something in like a, like a, uh, a curtain rod. These ends need to have at least wood screws at least embedded at least one inch into the, This is for a support now for a motorized fan. It's, it's going to have this. And it's just, not only that, it's just too many, there's too much bad information on these boxes. It needs to have this on it and it can only be sold. You cannot sell this to average person. That's what all the problems are. Electricity is dangerous. And when you have an unskilled person trying to put something like this in, it's super dangerous. So uh, electrical wholesale houses only if you want to sell them at all. I don't think you're going to need it because when we get our red boxes out, and without easy brace, uh, this just that's a, that's a passing thing. It shouldn't be sold at all. Anyways, um, you want to zoom in a little bit, Robert? Can you get this here? And you can move that a little bit. What I did is I I sent a notice to Underwriters Laboratory, and I sent them what which I listed this as the most wrong product of the industrial age. And right now it's under investigation. This is November 9th. I get a letter back from Underwriters Laboratory the product incident report numbers and all this other stuff. And the person who's gonna be doing the investigation is Carol L. Smith. She's at ul.com or she's got a phone number here. I would think that if nothing happens by uh, the end of December, you might wanna everybody send a letter to her. And Uh, lastly, as far as the new kids writing electrical codes, I just spilled my guts out. A lot of simple testing, simple knowledge. That we, if you don't know what's going on, you shouldn't be writing electrical codes. You're causing a problem. It's time to resign. Even the director. Okay, what we need to do, and I'm, look, you got 100 years of electrical. I've been here for half of it. I'm old. It's time to reboot. You've got to redo this system because it's broken. You have these people writing electrical codes. You have Underwriters Laboratory and the other people there that do not know enough to put this information on boxes and the information and what they test is wrong. We need to change it all. If there's licensed electricians checking this stuff out locally, you won't have these problems. And this is the problem today that they're not solving. They don't know what they're doing. They're all dancing or eating or whatever. You need to have licensed electricians. I'm in Long Beach, California. I don't know what's going on in Florida. I don't know what's going on in Texas. Hell, I don't know what's going on in the Valley. But I got a pretty good idea. The regular electri electrical appliances and stuff are sold all over. Be a wise idea to change the system today. Because this is not getting better, it's getting worse. I 
started this. I got a little acronym like that. What we need to have is licensed, knowledgeable, knowledgeable electricians running this system now. You can take it for what you want. I think the uh, National Fire Protection Association should fire the National Electrical Code Committee and let's go different. There's going to be a lot more things going on electrical in the industry. It gets better. There's more stuff coming out, just electrical equipment and everything. These guys are not handling it. You've got to move on. I did, my light codes, I got the codes. The codes was a, the circuitry in the houses. It's very important. The dedicated kitchen circuits. I got this on Article 10180, and it's a circuitry in residences. This will solve the problem of the overcurrent and the high current electrical uh, equipment causing an arc because it's already going to be protected before it's done. If you get the arc fault circuit interrupter and that causes and that detects a problem, you still got to fix the problem. If you're if you're allowing that in the code, that means you don't know what you're doing. This is standard. Everybody knows what's going on. Look, I have been doing this for as most of my life, and it's always been the repair I've done on every house, and it's always been I fixed it. It's done because I put a separate I, separate circuit in there. If I told these people it's going to put an arc fault circuit, uh, 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 arc fault circuit interrupted, and it's going to detect an arc and shut it off, they're going to look at me and say, well, what will that do? I'll say, well, I don't know. The National Electrical Code Committee, which is now the new kids writing electrical codes, they said I should use it. But it doesn't solve the problem. No, 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 it doesn't solve a problem, Ms. Smith. It's just there to detect an arc. Well, wouldn't it be better if we ran a separate line? I say, yeah, of course it is. That's what we'll do then. So run the separate lines in the kitchens, in the bedrooms, in the bathrooms, everything, separate lines, dedicated circuits, one per room at least. So what we need is, on the arc, instead of the arc fault circuit interrupted, detecting a problem and shutting the circuit, you've got to solve the problem before. And the way to solve the problem, I've been doing this for 49 years, 43 years in business. Every single time I solve the problem by leaving a dedicated circuit where it's needed. And then do that, then you don't get this, which is just burnt wires and everything else. By the way, this is Charlie did this. I took it out of a job, saved it. I just did the last service call. Charlie always makes this mistakes. And what you're doing by allowing the arc fault circuit interrupter in is blaming us, the electricians, for making the problem. It's never us. We are licensed electricians. And then the inspector inspects the job. What happens after, we got no control of it. By putting an arc fault circuit interrupter in, you're just feeding Charlie and the rest of the handyman up the, the, the broken part so they can change it and make a mess. That'll be complete circle of problem continuously. So let me explain something. The other thing is high current items, air conditioners, heaters. We changed the code before. They used to have plug-in, plug-in, uh, the 12 wire was able to plug in the back of the, the receptacles. And they changed that because they noticed, and I've done a lot of service calls like that, the wires would heat up. So we're only allowed to plug in a 14 gauge wire. That doesn't stop people from plugging in the rolling air conditioners, the wall window air conditioners, and the plug in heaters. They still use it, and what you have is you still have this. Your circuit breaker is over here, your air conditioner is plugged into this plug. All these outlets are like this, they're all going to get hot. They will heat, that wire will expand, expand, and then it'll contract, and you're going to get this every time. You can't put your air conditioner on a regular circuit. These things are 12,000, 13,000 BTUs. There's no more, the window ones were still five and 6,000 BTUs and 10,000, 8,000 BTUs. We were fixing problems then. Now they're even higher. You need to have dedicated circuits. You need to have these. You have to write UL, everybody else, on the package, on the box. Maybe 15% uh, of both sides of the package, the box, like the air conditioner. If it says 12,000, 10,000 BTUs, underneath it, it should stay. This product requires a separate 20 amp circuit. Have this picture on there. 
It should be uh, fed with 12 gauge wire with a protection of a 20 amp breaker. And this here, go ahead, zoom in there. I'll show you this. Okay, so on, on all the boxes, it should state this. The air conditioners, the plug-in heaters, some of the plug-in heaters, they have the wattage. Most of them have wattage, and then some of them actually say that it's drawing a lot of current. That's not enough. You need to tell the people who are buying, they don't know this. And what happens is they're going to have an electrical problem. They're going to call an electrician to do the troubleshoot and the repair, and they're still going to put these in to use the product. Or they're going to do what everybody does anyway, is they'll take an extension cord and plug that unit in some other part of the house and cause another problem. The arc fault circuit interrupter will do nothing to stop this. It's just going to open a circuit and cause a problem. This is what's going to solve the arcing problem. Have a dedicated line. When you put this on the box, you also put it on National Fire Protection Association National Electrical Code NEC. So they know who this, this, this uh, statement is from. You are the super guys. You are the best. You're the top. You're the guys that run the whole country when it comes to building and fire protection and safety. So put it on there and they should know about it. This picture should be on it. You, you should put this picture on the box. You got that? Okay. I put on here 20 amp percent. I don't, the 20 amp heavy duty plugs, you don't have to change them. They're really good. I've been doing this for 49 years. I have never changed a 20 amp plug. They're very durable. They last forever. That's what you want. That's, as a businessman, that's what I want to put in. I want to put in something that I don't have to go back. I want to put in something in the job that the customer is going to be satisfied with, and he's only going to call me back when he wants something more because he paid me for a quality job that's going to last him until he passes away. I don't know. Put this on the picture on the box. It's not a big deal to draw a picture. And put this on in the houses. Now, move down a little bit. You can zoom out a little bit. I drew a little floor plan. This is what I believe to solve the arcing problem, to solve all problems, because I've been doing this forever. Look, it's most of my life. And every time I've solved the problem the same way, it's always overcurrent, high, high current electrical equipment that'll blow the circuit breaker, that'll heat up the wire, that'll cause the arcing, cause a problem. Solve it now. If you're gonna wire a house, I believe because of the air conditioners and the plug-in heaters are so plentiful, and don't think if they, if they got central heat and air, it doesn't make any difference. Sometimes the central heat and the air will break and they'll still buy the little portable air conditioner. Sometimes one guy in this side of the house wants it more hotter and the other guy wants it colder. So they'll buy a rolling air conditioner and a heater. This happens all the time. It's sure to say that arc fault circuit interrupter in the office, when you're writing a code, it's going to work. But that's not reality. You have to go out there and find out yourself. And I've done it all my life. In the kitchen, every counter outlet. I don't care if you go to GFI, you don't need a GFI, it's ridiculous. Every counter outlet, put it on its own circuit. Sell the customer on it. Because you have air fryers, you have crock pots. You had all these appliances that are coming out every day and they, the ones that are there now, they're great products. They're gonna keep on making them. People are gonna keep on making them because it's great stuff. Tomorrow, five years from now, 10 years, they'll have some more stuff. Make sure that your customer can always plug in an appliance in any one of these plugs and they're not looped together because he wants to put, all right, so microwaves are mainly built in now. But another, maybe an air fryer over here, and he's going to have another heavy appliance over here, what's going to come out tomorrow, I don't know. Let them be able to plug in everything at one time. The arc fault interrupted, don't use it. It's just an expense that's not needed. What's needed is a separate dedicated line. Every room, in the bathroom, the same thing. I had this happen before. You have a mother and daughter, both using an air fryer in the bathroom. Maybe, maybe not. If they want more than one plug in the bathroom, do not loop them. Put the dedicated circuit. Tell them it's an advantage. 
We don't know what's going to go on tomorrow, but a dedicated circuit in here, a dedicated circuit in there. As you can see, when I did the GFI, GFCI test, it would not trip off. Besides, you have Revlon and Conair, all these places, they have their own safety plugs. Let the people that have the things worry about them. That way there, when you put a... When you put that dedicated plug in, if you're an inspector and you see the electrician put that in, you know that you signed that job off forever. That's not gonna go bad. This is a heavy duty, no components inside. It's just pressed together with a machine. They last and they don't break. That means that if it does not break, you don't get Charlie coming in to replace something and, and put in something bad. You have the electrician who put that in and the inspector signs it off, that's gonna be there. 30, 40, I don't know. I've never changed one. Revlon, everybody else has these hair dryers. This, is a, this may be a low wattage one, maybe it's 1100 watts. They have 1800 watt hair dryers. It'll burn out that GFI every time. I change them all the time. I don't know, they're, they're, not, gonna, they're not safety devices, they're just parts that'll break. I can't put my finger on why electricity does the damage that it does to component items, but it does. The GFI is false sense of safety and it will break and it will cause Charlie in here to change it and Charlie's going to mess up the house. Every bedroom, because of the plug-in heaters and the air conditioners, every plug, this, the rest of these plugs are fine. They don't draw anything. The clocks, TVs, computers, all that stuff doesn't draw any electricity. But they're going to use a plug-in heater. And if they don't use it, maybe the next guy that has the house. Put that on a 20 amp separate circuit, one, each, one for each room, the living room, the bedrooms, all the bedrooms. Again, the bathrooms, do not loop these plugs together. If they got one, one dedicated line. If they get two, put the second one on a dedicated line. The kitchen, the same thing, all dedicated lines. We do that anyway with all the fixed appliances, but make the counters the same way because the appliances are great. They're going to sell them. They keep on making them. They're going to sell a family room. They have generally so many plugs in here, they're all looped together. That's not enough no more. Put a separate line in, where, wherever you want to put it. Just put it where it's easily accessible. I put these here in the bedrooms, trying to pick out a spot. And you're going to have to do that when you get there. If this looks like it's going to be uh, the back, the headboard for the bed, you don't want to put it over there in the middle of the wall. You want to put it as close to a door or something. So you know that they're going to plug in an air conditioner, wherever they're going to plug it in. They can see that plug and it's easy to get at. You don't want people pulling on the cord to pull the thing out if it's hidden behind the wall. They gotta grab it at the plug. Cause that happens all the time. I just had another one just the other day and the woman was plugging, unplugging the uh, vacuum cleaner. You, you guys see this once in a while. The cords, on those little prongs on there, they bend, they get weak and it just causes a fire and stuff. It burns out. So you wanna make sure that they grab these plugs, all the plugs at the plug itself and pull it out. So don't hide these behind a bed or anything or, or any kind of furniture. Try to pick a spot where you know it, it'll always be easily seen and easily to accept. Same thing with the living room. If you know there's gonna be a sofa here, don't put it where the sofa is gonna be. Put it where it's easy accessible. And it should have, these plugs should have this plate on it. I just put this on, maybe you can think of something different. You don't have to do anything more to the, to the plug, it's pretty good, it's really good. Uh, just put an, uh, some label on the plate, so that way that when they buy this, this air conditioner or the heater, they're gonna see this picture on there. And then they see this picture in the house. It matches. You got the same plug with the same picture, it matches. Pictures work. I think I, I have this a lot. You got to make sure that plug on the outside. Uh, again, the GFI, I don't know that it's ever worked. I've changed a lot of them, most of them in the house. They just don't use the plugs as much. Although um, this front plug in here, and a lot of people get more and more into decorations, even though we have LED lights and stuff, they get more and more decorations with Christmas lights and they've got Halloween lights, everything. All this stuff, the decorations draws a lot of juice. Don't run that off the existing current. Just put a dedicated line there. You can always tell the customer, charge them a little extra, and you gotta tell our extra, whatever you wanna charge them, say, this is the benefit you're gonna thank me for. Because it is. I think this should be in the code book. In the garage, you need at least one dedicated line. Now the rest of them can be looked out with, again, 20 amp circuit, whatever, but one of them has to be separate. 
because they got good stuff to go with, that people use. They plug in like compressors and stuff. Got all kinds of stuff. Make that one there that one day to make sure it's identified, that identified as a 20 amp circuit, dedicated circuit. That's one of them. That's all it needs. Okay, this is your layout. Next thing I want to talk about is the YouTube electrician educators. This is getting more rampant and more wilder. Um, the National Fire Protection Association National Electrical Code should stamp this on all the videos. Let the videos run. Put this across the video. This electrical uh, information stated in this video is false. Electricity is dangerous. Hire a licensed electrician to install all electrical equipment. I don't care if it's a switch plate. You're the National Fire Protection Association. You rule. Make sure this is on all of you. Right now, we're not. Look, this is not gardening tips for your front yard. These people, ed, try, they're not educated themselves. They're trying to educate the unskilled per people how to do electrical work. This just... Terrible. It's getting wilder. They got people that got millions of views because they keep you got I can't tell you You got to look you want to look at something look at the people that try to do a video on installing these things. It is wild They don't they, they have no idea what they're doing themselves and they're trying to educate other people on doing this It's amazing. You have to stop the YouTube ed electrician educators the National Fire Protection Agency do this today Put this on the screen. Look, you supersede everybody. You have the right. This is not going to take an act of Congress to do this. This takes the act of the National Fire Protection Association and National Electrical Code Committee to put this on all the videos that are electrical. You can't have this. It's getting too wild. I'm saying do it about a third of the screen. Let this people who think they're electricians, who are trying to let them be embarrassed by this. You got it. I don't know if you're going to stop it completely. You have to slow it down. Got to do it today. This is uh, just about December 2021. This should be everywhere today. Up a little bit. Okay. The one thing I started doing electrical work in 1972. Okay. So when I started, there was no home. Home Depots and uh, even before Home Base and uh, I don't remember National Electric. There was just regular hardware stores, and you couldn't get the kind of gear that they have now. You had to be an electrician to go in the wholesale house to get it. Now it's everywhere. They have great products. They have great stuff. They're going to sell it everywhere. It's an advantage for the electrical contractor that some of these places exist. We can run in a store anywhere and pick up parts, but you have to put this sign on all home improvement stores that they, if they retail electrical equipment you got to put this down you have to remind people electricity is dangerous hire a licensed electrician to install all electrical equipment and put your sign on it national fire protection association national electrical code because you guys are the leaders of the building industry of the electrical building and the safety in the fire protection you can supersede put it there we know you can put it everywhere because we just went through this pandemic and they have signs all over the place. Wait here six feet apart. That that was for the pandemic. This is this is permanent. Put this on all the elect all the places that retail electrical equipment. You can do this. This is for safety. Electricity is dangerous. Remind the people. They don't know this. What's even more dangerous? is when people that are unskilled install the electrical equipment. That's five times more dangerous. Hire a licensed electrician to install all electrical equipment. And your name, National Fire Protection Association, National Electrical Code, and that's it. You don't have to say no more, just put it everywhere.
Okay, uh, under the licensed knowledge of electricians, uh, shall be assist, shall assist in listing electrical equipment and writing electrical codes. This, I believe, is a good suggestion. Uh, I think uh, National, Electri National uh, Fire Protection Association should work this out a little bit, uh, and they could work it out by application. And because um, I think the industry needs regulations set by people who work in the field. Licensed working electricians know what is needed and what where the problems are. And because you have a problem with the listing companies with that list appliances and stuff, and they don't know what's going on. And then the new kids writing electrical codes, you got a big confusion. The ones who know everything of licensed electricians, and you have to put out an application to get them to be uh, like uh, the knowledge of electricians. And that be some of the applications, you got the common information like name, just um, when was your license obtained, how many years have you been doing it, percentage in which electrical field, residential, commercial, electrical, uh, or something else, and years of electrical installations. Those are some of the questions that should be asked. I don't know that this is the exact solution, but this is a really good select, uh, suggestion because like I said, this has been on, I, I've been doing almost 50 years and opposed to 100 years of electrical. I know the system is broken, it needs to be upgraded. If not now, then next year, but it needs to be upgraded. You need a reboot. Okay, the last thing I wanna cover is what's new for 2022 from Fixture Support Systems. You know our Easy Brace and our Easy Braces are available online. We have the IBTs online, but the boxes that are coming out there, they're listed on the website, but we haven't shown everything yet because we're not gonna, they won't be out for another few months. So about early 2022, they should be out. Look, for over 100 years, what do we use? Round boxes for ceiling boxes. And why do we use them? Because the gas, comp gas lights were round. So we adapted to that. That's the only reason. We don't need them. What you need is you just needed 832 screws at three and a half inches on center. So we change the configuration. This is the red box. And with the red box, we have the same thing, 832 screws at three and a half inch spacing. The advantage is that all the, our boxes, all our red boxes fit our easy braces. Easy brace in there. Easy brace with the nail ons. They easy brace here. The channel brace is, is in there. The channel brace is in here. So they fit it all the, so you don't need any of these other boxes anymore. You can still use a plastic box, but the support will be according to 422. That what? Eight? Is that it? 422, 12 or eight? I think it's eight. The paddle fans are held independently of the outlet box. This is what they mean, our easy braces are. So with the red box, you can still leave, have the benefit of having a plastic box, but being able to support any kind of heavy fixture, you can use these. The other thing is, uh, show them the green box. Like the red box, for the walls, for your plugs and your switches, they have this box right here. We have the new green box. It has a number of little, uh, gadgets in there that makes it so much farther better than this from our flange with the size of our flange what? is better than the size of that flange so it has more support where you need it exactly where you need it and we have and places where we can put our we have robert wants to brag about the v cuts where you when you screw it in there it will you got to it, it has stops in there so your screws can go in there you can screw this up against the, a stud or that up against a joist. Uh, the V slots are in at the red boxes, so you can always cut it in and screw it right. And they got a little slot in them that holds the screw from sliding all the way to the back. You end up screwing at 45 degree. We'll show them a little bit later. They'll be on our website. That's it. Uh, the other thing is the one big benefit of making these the both the same size with the dimensions. Like I said, the red box is a little bit taller because it's got the three and a half inch spacing on the screws. And by the way, all these flanges are made to put a canopy. If you've got a canopy, they'll cover, or just a standard, as small as the, a little 
uh, porcelain pull chain that small. So, so we separate these flanges. The big flanges. The other thing is here. Turn around. We're gonna we're gonna show we're gonna show what we put in here. We show we put uh, pencil cuts. So when you put it down here, you know how hard it is to to draw this out with the this here. We put all these little pencil cuts. So now you can put this here. You can cut it here and mark it here. They got little pencil cuts over here, here and here. And now it's just easier to draw these things out when you cut them in. Because, and, and we have the same dimensions. In our wall boxes, we have knockouts for connectors. So if you have flex going inside the wall, you have the connector will fit in there for your flex. If you're gonna put your car charger in the garage somewhere, you have a six wire. I don't know if you tried to push six wire once you get it, your plug all wired in and now you gotta try to push your six wire in there when it's got a connector on there. This is perfect for that. You can, push your, you can put it in there, to, you put your plug in there, everything goes in there just nice and neat. You have your knockouts for your uh, yeah. Romex, you got your, and then you got your, your, for, your, uh, for your connectors, you got knockouts for your connectors on both sides. So, so it, you can put it in the wall very easily. In the, we show dimensions that we show that you can have like two MCs coming in from the bottom and top and you can still get in the wall. So it works. They're having the knockouts there. Nobody else did that, but we're doing it now. And they very function. And we still got room for, for Romex. Uh, Romex knockouts, we have them in here. So they're still, and this will, we showed it, it, it's good enough for 10-3 Romex. So, you know, it's wide enough for that. Oh, that goes off, that goes off 22. Okay, one more thing I want to show you, which is a big advantage of having these both the same size is using the box supports. Say your box is in between joists or studs and you have to put get to put your box in and you have nowhere to fasten it to even though it still has a, the cuts the the grooves inside there we have our box support back here unlike the the way they used to put the box supports in there it, it, it worked freely like this so when when they were tightening it down one side would tend to tighten down in between the box and the drywall which you wouldn't fasten it securely to the, to the drywall. It wouldn't fasten it to the drywall period when it does it. So they had a, a heck of a time trying to get that uh, where yeah. both sides of the, the support was yeah. up against the back part of the drywall. It wouldn't work. So, so Robert, what did you do? You put this in there. We put sponge in there that took care of this. That, we got an 832 screw and a star nut on the back of it so it it's easy to you just put it on and by itself you don't have to do nothing you can else. do it with a speedy screwdriver now yeah, call up just, klein tell them where you can use some of your speedy screwdrivers just put it in there and the screw and just of course you can do this with an electric drill too but all right i think i got a bad screw electric head. drill would be much too easy to do oh you put the wrong you put the phillips head in there you put a flat head i need the phillips head wonder but, why it wasn't but you holding. you see what it did. I, I just tightened that Damn down. Right. It goes all the way down. And, it, and, and with the size of a flange, opposed to the size of this flange, this is a very, very good product here. This works really good. It holds it in the foot. I, I put these things in your side of the demonstration that we hold it. We're holding this box with this box support with 50 pounds on it. But you really can't say that because I don't know what the drywall holds. But... It, it holds 50 pounds with this back support, the box support on standard drywall. So if you have brittle drywall or, or drywall that's soaked up, it's not going to hold it. But see, then you can make a mistake and pull it back out. So it'll stay, it'll keep its function only because we use this, this, uh, uh, this $1,000 fix for 20 cents. Okay, just a little sponge. Works so good. So anyways, this is new for 2022. Expect it in the stores right around... I will have it online. We'll show you when it's on. It'll be somewhere, I think, right around March. If we can get out earlier, we will. But right now, we're, we're looking just around March. Anyways, me and Rock, but we, me and Robert are looking out for you. And we are always be making better in our quest for the best, okay? And Check we got out. More to come. Yeah. More, more we have more stuff by the end of the year because uh, uh, we have, what we have to do is get it. We're going to be selling all this stuff separately so you can have yourself your little kit. And here you can get. Um, uh, we just picked up this husky kit just to show you what we can be do. What you can do with it. And this is just just carries a lot of screws, uh, easy spacers. We got uh, wood screws, sponges, all kinds of different things in here. So we got stuff for the 
for the Easy Brace 200. Supports for the back. Yeah. This is a little double, this is double uh, from, the Husky makes this one, so we just picked it up just to show you. Well, we're not gonna make one, we just, we just show you where you can get these here. Other than wire and your, your fixtures and your uh, plugs and your switches, you have everything in there that you need, plus your box, your box, whatever you need to, to, to do any kind of electrical job, whether you're, you're putting plugs, switches, ceiling fans, or light fixtures in. That, that, that. We're just making it a little bit more compact good. for you, okay? You so that's good. so much stuff. That one box right there takes care of a lot of stuff right there. So anyways, I just want to uh, just, uh, we're, I'm just going to zoom in on this one thing. This is our, uh, our card that you probably got in the mail. And we're just going to put our, what we have is our website and our email address. And uh, National Fire Protection and National Electrical Code Committee. Um, I got to zoom in on there and just leave it there. The address. Okay, so that's it. So you know what it is. There's the, the website, the email address, and the information for the National Electrical Code and the National Fire Protection Association. So, fixture support systems will be a staple in the electrical industry. Yeah, that's it. The staple, a romantic staple. <laughs>